Hello everyone, welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions instructional videos. In this video, we're gonna go over the basics of the rational method part two. We're gonna cover the Q and C part of that Q equals CIA equation. And uh, this is another part of our hydrology education series. I'm your instructor. And uh, just a quick background about Clear Creek Solutions. Um, Clear Creek Solutions does software development, hydrology education, such as these videos and clinics, as well as stormwater analysis and facility modeling for stormwater and hydrology projects. You can go to clearcreeksolutions.com uh, to learn more about Clear Creek Solutions. But let's get into the video. So let's talk about the rational method. The rational method consists of a few key equations. We're gonna talk about this equation, Q equals CIA, which uh, most of you are familiar with. If you wanna learn more about that basic equation, uh, go watch our first video on it where Q equals discharge, C equals runoff coefficient, A equals site acreage, and I equals rainfall intensity. Another thing to keep in mind with these units is that we are assuming English units. It is different for the metric system, but uh, since we are based in the United States, we're gonna be using English units. So that is what the basic equation is of the rational method. Q is measured in cubic feet per second. C is actually a dimensionless coefficient, and we're going to get into what makes up that coefficient. I is measured in inches per hour of rainfall intensity, and that A generally is measured in acres in English units. You could use uh, feet squared, but usually when we're talking about rainfall runoff with the rational method, we are usually talking about uh, acres. In this video, we're gonna cover what makes up the Q and C of that equation. So let's first talk about Q, or it estimates the runoff from a particular site. The rational method uh, actually makes some assumptions when it comes to this equation. One of the assumptions is, is that your site is less than 200 acres in size. So that's one of the things to, to keep in mind. Once we get above 200 acres, the equation kind of breaks down, but an over 200 acre site, well, that's, uh, that's pretty large when you're talking about uh, runoff. But other methods such as continuous simulation, they can handle that pretty easily. But the equation kind of breaks down when you get over 200 acres. Flow can be used to estimate what stormwater mitigation methods must be used to handle the flow from a site. So Q, flow, and runoff, this is really important when it comes to stormwater design. We got to know what that Q is. So when a certain stormwater event occurs in this single, uh, single event method, um, how much runoff are we getting? What is that peak flow like? So we can design stormwater mitigation methods uh, to handle that peak runoff. So if you have a site that, um, and we'll go over an example here, but if you had just a few acres of forest, you cut down some of that forest, you put in uh, pavement or something, now we're getting rainfall onto that site. Using the rational method, we need to find what that peak flow is and do we need a detention pond? Do we need uh, low impact development or other facilities to help mitigate that stormwater to prevent flooding or erosive flows? We need to know that. So the Q uh, of the Q equals CIA obviously is really important. That's what we're solving for. It helps determine our stormwater mitigation methods and getting a proper runoff estimation is uh, critical for whatever design you're doing in uh, hydrology. So it's going to rain on a site. We need to figure out, well, how, you know, because of that peak runoff, you know, where, where can we put the catch basin, basins? How many? Uh, what other mitigation methods do we need? It's going to be really critical. And so that's why the equation revolves around that value. Now let's talk about C, the run runoff coefficient. It is the dimensionless value in this equation. So the runoff coefficient C is a dimensionless coefficient relating the amount of runoff to the amount of precipitation received. It is a larger value for areas with low infiltration and high runoff, and so something like pavement, and lower for permeable, well-vegetated areas. And we're gonna think about this logically here uh, in the next slide, because if, uh, if you have an impervious area, such as pavement, you're gonna get more runoff from that, and therefore greater peak flow. So I'll show you how that works. It's measured by determining the soil type, gradient, permeability, and land use. The values are taken from the table on the next slide. I'll show you, um, you know, what the different C values are. And larger values correspond to higher runoff and lower infiltration. The designer must use judgment to select the appropriate C value within the range. Generally, larger areas with permeable soil, flat slopes, and dense vegetation should have the lowest C values. 
and smaller areas with dense soils, moderate to steep slopes, and sparse vegetation should assign the highest C values. So if you look at this table here, here's runoff coefficients for uh, different land use types. I don't know if this is every combination. This is just a, a table I've taken from data that you can find. But if you look at like a business downtown area, 0.7 to 0.95, um, that's a pretty high runoff coefficient because there's going to be a lot of impervious area there, uh, possibly a lot of steep slopes. You're going to get a lot of peak runoff from that. As opposed to take something like uh, heavy soil lawns or uh, you know unimproved playgrounds, there's going to be a lot of infiltration in that soil. So you're not going to get a lot of peak runoff from that because a lot of the water is infiltrating. It's not sloped very heavily. The surfaces aren't impervious, causing that water to uh, flow faster. But you know, as we get into residential, um, it gets more moderated. Apartment, uh, industrial areas could be different between light and heavy. But the more we get into an urban area where there is more impervious runoff, the higher the runoff coefficient, and the more you're getting into regular soils that you find out in, you know, the forest or any sort of natural environment, the runoff coefficient gets less because we're going to get less peak flow from that. And so what we've talked about before with erosive flows, the more impervious surfaces that we get, uh, the more runoff, the more flow we're going to get, the more chance that we're going to have those erosive flows because it's more flowing outside the normal natural range of what stormwater does. So if we look at the runoff coefficient relationship, Q equals CIA, right? So the greater that C value, the greater the peak flow value, um, which is what I was explaining before. So that downtown business which has more impervious area will create a larger peak runoff than something like lawn or forest or natural soil where a lot of that's going to infiltrate and the water's not going to flow as quick but if you just dump water on some concrete it's going to run off immediately so that's why we get a greater runner runoff coefficient for that and therefore you're going to get a greater q value or peak flow so another thing to keep in mind is the runoff coefficient is not to be confused with curve numbers that is from the scs uh, curve number method okay so curve numbers are using the SES curve number method which has a different set of equations i will cover that in a separate video if you want to learn about that this is just the runoff coefficient c not the curve number um, an interesting tool that you can find on the internet actually is a rational method calculator and i have the link in the bottom left here where you can uh, just enter in different drainage area values rainfall intensity rational ref uh, rational method runoff coefficient and you can see uh, the peak discharge that is calculated. So if you want to see how the relationships work, uh, you know, go through some sample problems, you can definitely do that and see what kind of peak discharge you'll get if uh, you use these equations. So thank you for watching the video. If you want to learn more about the different kinds of hydrology, there's continuous simulation, there's that SCS runoff method that I mentioned, there's the rational method, and you're a little confused about how these all work and what they can do, what their limitation, limitations are, we should download our ultimate hydrology guide that Clear Creek Solutions provides. It's 100% free. Click the link down below, and this guide will give you an outline of what these different kinds of hydrology can do, uh, what, you know, what software is available that can use these methodologies. Okay, so download that ultimate hydrology guide, look through it, and that'll help you maybe clear some things up. And uh, thank you for watching, Stormwater Designers.